We asked you your top blue tongue skink questions on our Instagram, and I'm here today to answer those for you. I am a certified vet tech and animal care manager here at Zen Habitats. And like I just mentioned, we asked you what your top blue tongue skink questions were, and I'm going to answer them with the help of my friend Cleo right here. She is a northern blue tongue skink and she is amazing. Drop a comment below of something that you learned during this video. And as always, make sure you like, this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The first question that I want to go over was a really great question. It is, what is the difference between the Indonesian species and the other species? So when they say other, I'm assuming that they mean the Australian subspecies. So there are a number of subspecies of blue tongue skinks. Um, there are Indonesian ones of origin and Australian ones of origin. Some of the Indonesian subspecies include the classic Indonesian, the Halmahera, the Irian Jaya, K Island, the Murrow K, and the Tanambar. For the Australian species, or subspecies rather, they can include the blotched, the centrillion, eastern northern like Cleo here, pygmy, shingleback or bobtail, and the western blue tongue skinks. So as far as the differences in the subspecies really has to do with where they're from. Like I said, there's the Indonesian and the Australian ones. And there's variations in colors and sizes. So for me though, the biggest difference is how they are bred or not bred rather. The Australian species um, are generally going to be captive bred as Australia has very strict laws about exporting their animals. And then as with the Indonesian, their laws are not as strict so a lot of animals are still exported from Indonesia. So you might see those guys are more wild caught. So they breed in the wild and then they are captured and then brought to the US and brought into the pet trade. I personally prefer to get my animals that are captive bred. One, just because I find that it's more ethical. And two, their personalities or their behaviors and temperaments are generally much more docile because they have been handled by people since a young age. The next question we were asked was, what is the best subspecies to have? Now, I think that is definitely a personal opinion um, on what kind of blue tongue skink you want to bring home. I personally really love the northern blue tongue skinks, which is what Cleo is. Again, we go into the captive breeding, so she is a very docile skink. Oh, listen to her hiss, she's not too happy with me. <laughs> um, but they are generally going to be much, much more docile and even tempered, so bonding and handling are a lot easier with these captive bred guys. The next question we were asked was, do we think that blue tongue skinks make good first time reptiles? I consider blue tongue skinks to be good for beginner and intermediate reptile keepers. With that being said, this isn't a complete care guide to caring for blue tongue skinks. I do think that tons and tons of research needs to be done on your own from multiple different sources so that you're able to really compile the information yourself to figure out what will be best for your new pet. Again, research, research, research before you bring the animal home. The next question we were asked was, how is their friendliness slash outgoingness? So, as I've mentioned in other videos prior to this, a not a ton of research has been done on reptile personality. We kind of, as humans, attribute a behavior as a personality. So for these guys, um, it's definitely going to be subspecies dependent, as well as individual dependence. And again, we have to factor in that wild caught versus captive bred 
origins. They can be great pets because they are fairly easy to habituate and this is because they are so food motivated. Any animal that will readily take food from you is going to be easiest easiest to train. <laughs> the next question that we were asked was kind of a statement in question. They said, my skink is skittish. How do I bond with them? So with these guys, I think routine is key. So doing things at the same time, have a scheduled bonding time, whether that is to take your animal out for a little snuggle sesh, to do some hand feeding, things like that. Try to stick to doing that routine the same, about the same time every day, and that will definitely help get your skin into a routine. They really do like routine. Like I had mentioned, these guys are super food motivated, so food is a great tool to use when trying to bond with these animals. So like I said, snuggling, hand feeding, stick to the routine. Another thing that you can do is just be around your animal's enclosure. So not necessarily sticking your hands in and being threatening or anything like that. Just be around them so that they can see you and watch you. They're very inquisitive and curious lizards. The next two questions we were asked were in regards to advice on how to get their blue tongue skink to eat their veggies. Before I answer those questions, I kind of want to do a whole diet overview. Blue tongue skinks are omnivores, which means they eat a variety of protein and plant materials. Some good suggestions for protein sources include insects, chicken, turkey, rodents, rabbit, things like that. Depending on which subspecies you are caring for will also depend on their protein to vegetable or plant material ratio. Juveniles should get between 70 to 80% protein, where adults should get closer to 50 to 60% protein material. There is an exception with the shingleback subspecies where they're still omnivores, but they have a more herbivorous diet where they only need about 20 to 30% protein material and the rest should be made up of plant material. Some feeder insects that I like to use for blue tongue skinks include dubia roaches, black soldier fly larvae, hornworms, silkworms, earthworms, and superworms. Now that we went over some protein sources, we should go over what our plant material should be made up of. You can do a number of vegetables like squash, uh, bell peppers, carrots, as well as greens like collard greens, mustard greens, turnip greens, etc. Fruit should be given in moderation just because of its high sugar content and because these guys are so food motivated, we don't want an obese blue tongue skink. I would say not to go over like 10% of their diet being made up of fruit. They really love berries. Um, Cleo here loves blueberries, just like Rosie, if you watched our other video. Um, for whatever reason, my girls here, they love their blueberries. For your blue tongue skink, you could do things like blueberries, or blackberries, or raspberries, or even bits of apple, banana, melon. I just try to stay away from the citrus fruits. The next thing I want to go over in regards to diet is that there are some commercially available options that you can use like high protein, high quality canned cat food for juveniles and high quality wet dog food for adults. There's also companies like Reptilinks, which makes whole prey item, essentially reptile sausages. Um, and Rapashi has a really great gel diet called Bluey Buffet, which Cleo loves. The main ingredient in that is black soldier fly larva. So the two questions that I was referencing earlier had to do with trying to get their blue tongue skin to eat their veggies, which can be difficult because they love the sweet stuff and they love their meaty protein. Even though they're supposed to eat veggies, some of them can be difficult. Some things that I have done in the past to get animals to eat their veggies when they don't want to is to take some banana and kind of smush it up on top of their veggies so it tastes nice and sweet but you're not giving them like a ton of banana and a ton of fruit just enough to like kind of coat it so that it masks the flavor or you can also chop up your veggies or blend them super duper fine and mix them into your protein 
So like if you're doing the dog or cat food, like you can blend up some of your greens and mix it right into that soft food. Another option that has worked for me, though I haven't done it with the Bluey Buffet, I've done it with Rapashi's Grub Pie, um, is to kind of make a slurry with that gel diet by mixing more water with that powder and kind of making, like I said, a slurry and then covering their veggies in that. And another option is to just offer so many different types of vegetables until you figure out what works. Again, variety is key with these guys, so it's not a bad idea to try all the veggies anyways. One of the questions that we were asked was, someone was following other Blue Tongue Skink Keepers and they noticed that they were feeding wet cat food and they were wondering why. I think that this is an older way of doing things. Like We've done a lot more research in the past years with the reptile hobby growing that we have discovered more and more food options than say 20 years ago. That does not mean that feeding wet cat food is wrong. I recommend that if you are going to be feeding a cat or a dog food that you stick with a brand that offers a raw diet. So being a raw diet, it should include things like the actual bones, ground up, as well as organ meats, which are all very important to your skinks. Diet. <laughs> the next question we were asked was, what is the recommended enclosure size? So for our girl Cleo over here, she is typically housed in a four by two by two zen habitat. She is just in this little display box just for the video. She doesn't live in here permanently. While we're talking about enclosures, I wanna address some of the Blue Tug Skink's humidity needs. So remember we went over a ton of different subspecies and a good chunk of them need different humidity. For Cleo, her being a northern blue tongue skink, she should get somewhere between 40 to 60% humidity. What I like to use for a substrate for all blue tongue skinks is a mixture of coconut core and cypress mulch it really, really holds in the humidity. So for example, like I said, Cleo, who is a northern blue tongue skink, should have about 40 to 60% humidity, where some of the other subspecies, like the classic Indonesian, should be closer to the 60 to 80%. And the Halimera, for example, needs 80 to 100% humidity. The next question we were asked, what is the best UVB light and heat source for these guys? So like I said, again, I feel like a broken record and I'm so sorry, but there's so many different subspecies that have different needs. For Cleo, our northern blue tongue skink, I have her housed with a 24 inch T5 12% UVB bulb and an 80 watt halogen flood lamp for her basking spot that goes over her zen cave, heats up this stone nice and she'll sit up there and bask or she'll be in her cave where she's enjoying the warmth that way. <laughs> okay, this next question is so good and it was actually the most popular question asked and it is why is a blue tongue skinks tongue blue? And honestly, I had no idea. Like it is it's something that I've always wondered but for some reason never Googled and it's actually a threat to predators or a defense to predators. So when they are threatened by another animal, whether it be another lizard, a snake, a bird, something that is trying to eat them, they will stick out that bright blue tongue and puff out their body and try to make themselves look as big as possible. So we know that some dart frogs in the wild are these bright blue colors, bright colors in general, and that just says, hey, I'm poisonous, stay away from me. These guys are not poisonous or venomous or any of those things. They just have this bright blue tongue to be scary. So, and I actually read this other thing that I thought was super cool, that on some of the species, the blue that's on the back part of the tongue is actually brighter than the blue on the front part. And they think that is for animals that see in UV spectrum light. 
that that blue really shines and it looks super scary to predators. Cleo and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and I hope that I answered all of your blue tongue skin questions. Again, drop a comment below of something that you learned during this video. And as always, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as some of our other social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks so much.